Welcome to the Great Lake Smoke Podcast Show. What we talk about basically is the love and the passion of cigars, pipe smoking, tobacco, alcohol, brothers chilling out and having a good time, laughter. Well, what, <laughs> well, how else are you going to you know, enjoy a nice bourbon? And, and you kind of went animalistic on uh, tobacco buying. Huh? And the Rocky yeah. Patel pure and simple. I don't know, that, that thing just tastes so good. And welcome to another Great Lakes Podcast Show. Uh, we got a hot one for you tonight, folks. So I hope you all grab yourself a good cigar, a good spirit, sit back in your favorite chair, and spread the word. Get that watch party going because we got an incredible guest that uh, is going to blow you away. So hang on there, folks. Uh, we got a lot of newbies coming on board, and we really thank you. We got people, uh, where do we have people from last week? Hawaii? Yeah, the we had people, so, people from yeah. Hawaii, Israel. We got a lot of people coming um, around um, the world. Yeah. yeah, it's been awesome. Pretty it's cool. been awesome. So uh, Down the block. Yeah, we got down the block. Got down yeah, the block. that's block, pretty, that's too, far yeah. away, too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just a little introduction to you. Is for those who don't know us, my name's Ron Pecorini. This is my brother, Bob Pecorini. Doing, folks? We got the man behind the scenes, the technician, the man sitting in the bar in his basement right now, Mr. Kyle Gesso. Welcome, everyone. We're going to have a good show go. tonight. There we go. <laughs> and the man sitting down in one of those smoking type lounges uh, that we know of in Florida. Uh, the one. I'm here in Florida. Here I am. There oh. goes, there we see a cousin Frank <laughs> of the Stump the Chute Show, which will be coming on right after our special guest. So stick around. We got a special prize for you guys. It comes dedicated, uh, donated by our special guest. But grab yourself a pen and paper also and uh, jot down some information that you will be learning in tonight. And if you have any questions, you, you can we're email. Something? Oh, we'll be teaching. Our well, guests I will be teaching them. Like a lot so, of bad things, but uh, uh, well, you know, <laughs> we, we always teach bad. I know. Just look at you. Bad. Oh, there yeah. you go. <laughs> <laughs> and um, if you want to write to us, it's the Great Lakes uh, Smoke Show at aol.com. Give us a, a little uh, reach out to whatever you want us to talk about. Anything that you guys want to add to the show. And we can get going you from want to there. Be a sponsor of the show too. Ah, uh, the hey. sponsor. You see, you hit the sponsor. Hey. We, we weren't there yet, but well, I was going let's there. Go right to we'll it. Go right there. <laughs> if you want to be a sponsor on our show, we're always looking to keep us going. You know, we got to get those items out to the freebies that you guys win, and of course, we and need all those things to rate your smoke, cigars. Man. Rating cigars. Got cigars you want us to try? We'll yeah. rate them for you. And if you got a business yep. that you just like the world to know about, got it. No, yeah, drop something us a in line. the industry, anything in, in, you know involving tobacco and uh, whether it's pipes, cigars, or, or spirits. Uh, or if you want to talk about the uh, spirits and not the <laughs> not the blue <laughs> kind. <laughs> but anyway, and speaking of sponsors, sponsors, maybe we should not? hear about. Why don't we drop some yeah. a couple of sponsors right now, Kyle? Take it away. Our sponsors are. DAV Cigars out of New York. Decades of experience combined with true love and deep understanding of cigars result in the highest level of standard of each DAV hand-rolled cigar. Next sponsor is RNA Treasures out of Tampa Bay, Florida. The last of a legacy. The last inventory from Thomas Cristiano in a warehouse where everything is aged and well-kept for all your pipe and smoking needs. And finally, the Chicago Pipe Collectors Club, one of the largest and oldest pipe groups in North America with the largest pipe show worldwide. Every first weekend in May, always looking for new members, and if you're interested, please contact via Facebook. And now, back to you, Ron. Thank you, Kyle. Appreciate that. That's just some of the sponsors that we have, folks, and uh, looking for more. But uh, anyway, so I've been pumping this for the last few days about our special guest. 
and I'm getting a lot of responses on people who actually know the special guest or have been in many of his lounges and uh, wonderful things have been said. Well, we've been there. And we, uh, that's how we met him. That's how we that's met That's how we met yes, him, we for did. sure. Last what a February. great spot it was, too. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, West Palm Beach, Florida. Smoking. Yeah. yeah. And that kind of leads up to our special guest. Tonight, the one, the only, Honest Dave. <laughs> Honest <laughs> Dave it is. How are you, sir? What's up, gentlemen? How's everybody doing tonight? We're doing great now that you're here. <laughs> I, see, I see you went opted for the honest Abe introduction. Well done. <laughs> yeah, you know, I have a thing about names. <laughs> <laughs> right. My pronunciation isn't the best. You know, we found out that you're on the lamb. We didn't want to give away your last name, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a virtual background. You can see that just like everybody. <laughs> yeah. He's actually in uh Phoenix, you know. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> well, Isn't that where they all go to Phoenix? <laughs> yeah. They, they all go to Phoenix, That's you know, right. my blue heaven. <laughs> right. So how are you doing, Abe? I'm doing really good tonight. What are you guys smoking tonight? I got an HC. You got an HC. Uh, what are you smoking? It, it, it was, it's a Cuban without a label. Ah. All right. Mm. And we were, I was debating to smoke one of your cigars. But I wanted to rate your cigars and sit down and, and do a whole rating system. Which cigar would that be? Well, we've got... Just curious. Uh, let's see. You got a uh, La Six Provincia. Okay. Well, you know that's not my cigar. That's Eric Espinosa's cigar. Well, ah. this is what I received today. Yes. <laughs> he sold you that cigar. Oh, right. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, we do have our micro blend collection, so I just wanted to be sure. All right. Well, that's the one that um, we like to smoke. And I, th I was talking to Bob, should we do it now with him on there? But it wouldn't be fair because we're really more focusing on you. And we we'll yeah. really sit there and really get the taste buds and yeah, all that's of that how we stuff. have to sit back and concentrate so, on, you know. Yeah, it, it takes a little mm -hmm. bit of time. They need a lot of concentrating. Yeah. We do. Oh, yeah. We're old, Frank. We're old. Yeah. <laughs> you know, gotta we're not take, like Kyle. Got to take those focus pills, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. what are we talking about? Oh, I oh, who, who, who's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think the, the most important thing is how Abe got started in the business because oh. you know his love of cigars goes way back. I mean, not as far back as as Bob because Bob is ancient. But <laughs> Abe is a lot younger than us. Yeah, I know. Uh, not that much younger. I tell you, you know, it's those days, you know, look, you used to always be the youngest guy in the room. It didn't, doesn't seem like it was that long ago for me where, like, you know, anytime you were in a room with people, I used to play a regular Wednesday night poker game when I first moved here. I was 26. And I looked at all my friends, and they're all the guys from the cigar shop, you know, in their 40s, some almost 50s, I'm older than 50. That's like Kyle. I, I, remember, <laughs> I remember one night saying, Jesus. I'm like, what? I said, I don't know. I'm looking around you guys. I'm saying, who the fuck am I going to play with in 25 years? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, you know, we get to that age now where, like, you know, when you don't see somebody for 20 years, you know, when you were younger, you're like, oh, I wonder what he's up to these days. Now we get to the point where we're saying, wow. I hope he's still around. Exactly. <laughs> but you know, you're right. Sucks. Yeah. yeah it mm -hmm. It's very scary. Kyle's going to say that in 30 years. Right? Yeah. Well, Brady brothers. I, I'm still, Dude, I'm still, I'm still right? hoping this, we're still doing this show 20 years from now, at least with some, uh, most of us. <laughs> well, I'll be in uh, my wheelchair. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll float around and get a camera going. Yeah, if we it. can get they'll, the nurse they'll be stop. Able to squeeze the comments in between oxygen pumps. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, in between oxygens, yeah. it's going to be the cigar. Take a mask off and take a puff. <laughs> <laughs> and then take a sip. <laughs> how does a Chicagoan find his way down to Florida? By accident. You know, I mean, <laughs> look, I mean, look, I mean, it's one of those things, you know, you, you, if you even try to make a plan, life will laugh at you, you know, I mean, just kind of the way it goes. Um, I'll give a quick summation because I think I've told this story like at least a thousand times, but you know, I was the first time to us. 
first time to you guys. So <laughs> basically, um, I out of school, I was in, I started my own. I, I started working with one of my uncles, my mom's brother, uh, in a packaging business. I went to Indiana University for two years. I came back. I tried to continue my education in Loyola University. Um, you know, just college wasn't my thing. You know, all, all I kept doing was getting more in debt, and I really wasn't that interested. And I. I'd done a lot of side things that I was making good money on and just, I was more excited and driven by business than I was school early on. So I ended up starting my own graphics company, running it out of my house. And I had a really good product. I mean, it was really such a good product that I, I only worked like two or three days a month. Well, that wow. sounds like a you, month. Acapulco Gold. A month, I'm 20 <laughs> something years old, a oh. month. I'd go, I go, huh. I go out, hit the street. I had this great product, I go out, hit the street. I'd write up an eight, ten, twelve thousand dollar order. I'd produce it in two days, and I wouldn't have to work for a month until my bank account started getting lower. Wow. <laughs> and, it drove, and it drove my dad crazy because that's not a job, you know. What I mean, you know, what I mean, you know, he's my dad's from the school of you know, you, know, you can only find happiness through suffering, you know. And I wasn't that's, suffering yeah, enough, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Got to work those seven days a week, you know. I mean, literally. <laughs> so, um, uh, I kind of got, you know instead of arguing with my dad, he said, well, you know, why don't I just work with him three days a week in the grocery business, which I grew up my whole life. I mean, I was working a cash register at 10 years old. You know I mean? I grew up my whole life in, in the grocery. In fact, literally early on when him and my mother were just working, they had a playpen in the back room. So I was in a grocery. <laughs> wow. Clearly, I'm not kidding. I was in a grocery business as early as I can remember. So I, I, to appease him, I worked three days a week. You know I mean? Not just, just to make him happy, but of course, I went there, I started making things better. I started doing things because you know, I'm just, it's my dad's shop. I want to do the best I can for him. And I already had a graphics pro uh, product. And one of the product I was selling was perfect for his business. So I lined up the store, I started making it better. And he'd been partners with his uncle for about 20, my, my uncle, his brother, for about 20 years. And my brother, he just wanted out. So I ended up getting thrown into becoming partners with my dad and running the family business with him for two or three years, four years, no, four or five years maybe. Um, but during this time, I really got into cigars. I mean, I dabbled a little bit in high school. You know, you swish your sweets after a victory, you know, <laughs> and, and, and whatnot. And Black then I kind of miles. really got into it. And and it's funny because the first sh cigar shop I went to is a, one of the most historic shops in our industry, which is Uptown Tobacco in, in, in Chicago, Illinois, um, on the Gold Coast. And it was uh, Diana Silvius' shop, who she's passed away, God rest her soul. But she was an icon in our industry, you know, um, uh, and especially as a, in, in a, as a woman back in those days. She was an amazing person. But that was like my first little cigar store because I would go downtown or take a date and go to Second City and we'd stop by her shop and I'd grab a cigar for the evening. No, I uh, Reese. I'm sorry? I win Reese. I didn't, I, I, Ewan Reese, I, I eventually got into and Jack Schwartz later on, but I didn't live in the city. I lived in the suburbs. So, the cigar was more tied to me going out for the night. So Diana's shop was the shop I kind of hit when I would go out in the city. But then there were local shops where I lived in the suburbs that I began to frequent um, a lot. And um, I ended up meeting some people in North Carolina who be, I became friends with. Um, and one of them ended up uh, building a house uh, here in, in Jupiter Island, beautiful house, where actually um, my other good friend who's just weird how the world works. Um, and he's been a good patron of ours for, for many years. Um, the owner of the Raven, Steve Basadi, he ends up, he, he lives where that friend currently used to live now in the same, same house, not the same house, same property. So long of the story short, um, another gentleman I'd met had wanted to move to Florida and they were gonna open up a cigar shop called Smokey and they wanted me to move down. I had just gotten into the family business. I wasn't gonna up and leave my father and yeah, so, at that time, we had concocted a plan to open up a smoke in in Winnetka, Illinois. Oh, um, oh okay. Yeah, in Winnetka, Illinois. Uh, and I started like a year, a negotiation with McDonald's who owned the property. And we were like a year into the negotiations. It really was hard. And at that time, I had done such a good job taking over the grocery business with the co-op and everything and the sales. There was a really big, uh, about maybe three times the size of our family business um, grocery store that was not far away, maybe about 20 minutes away that I guess either started to get mismanaged because historically they were a much bigger operation than we were. 
And the co-op who they own the money to basically said, hey, we'd like to give you this store. Just take it, run it, continue the payments, and it's yours. So that's when I was really conflicted because I kind of knew at that point, if I do this, I'm never getting out of the grocery business, you know? And um, I, I uh, came to Florida to think about it. I visited my friend who had already had the first smoke in here for about a year. I came to think about it. We talked about it. And then I had flown down. It was going to be like a 10 day trip mm -hmm. just to get away, figure out what I wanted to do. And uh, he just says to me, just stay here. We'll run the shop. And just like that. And I'd already spent like seven days there. I mean, look, I love cigars, but I'm going to tell you guys something. It's no secret. I think it's before. It's not what drew me to the business. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the lifestyle. It's the people. I've always been a people person, even in our grocery business. My customers were the kids of people who were my parents' customers. You know, I mean, they, they, they all saw me grow up since five years old until I moved away. Um, they know what bones I broke, you know. <laughs> so, what trouble you got in. Yeah, every time I got in trouble. Oh, God, yeah. I, I got a great Casey and the Sunshine Band story I, I'll share with you. I mean, if you want to hear a good story, here's a great story. But this is older. But I'd gone to North Carolina and I'd met um, a, a great friend of mine. She lives in Florida. And we just happened to reconnect like three or four years ago. But I'd met a, a, a woman who, who performs with Casey and the Sunshine Band. Her name is Maria. And we'd become really, really good friends. And it was on a trip in North Carolina. And um, I was driving back to Chicago. And um, no, she had left the week before. She had left before I had left North Carolina. We we're in Chapel Hill area. And I got a call. And it was from her and she says, look, uh, we're performing in Chicago this weekend. Would you like to come to the show? And I went, oh, okay, let me check my calendar. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, sure. You know, the village people were the opening act or the, the co-act or whatever. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm at this time 25 years old, 26 years old. Oh, so <laughs> so I, 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 I do this 16 hour straight drive back to Chicago and my parents hadn't seen me in two weeks, three weeks. I get home at, I don't know, it's gotta be like 9.30 at night, 10 o'clock at night. Get, say hi to my mother and father. Now my dad's already given me this lecture. I, I, this, is, this is on a, on a, let's see here, Saturday. So this is on a Friday night I get home. Now Friday night they were playing in Valpo. Oh yeah. Which is which is not far from the border. And then she wanted to get together with me Friday night after they did the Valpo show and then go see the Saturday show with them. So I literally walk in the house and I'm like, okay, see ya, gotta go. Put on some clothes, took a quick shower. And they're like, where are you going? I said, I'm, I'm going to see a friend. Now my dad had already given me the lecture because I just got back to town. He's like, he was leaving for Detroit that Saturday morning for a weekend, he had to go to a wedding. So he's like, you know, I know you're coming back from a vacation, but you know, you got to open and work this weekend. I got you covered, dad. Don't worry about it. No problem. Right. Uh -huh. So I end up going out with her and we're out till three, four in the morning. Easy. Now I, I got to open up the <laughs> store at 7 a.m. Right. So I remember coming home. I said, I'm not even going to go to my bed. I went oh, alarm clock days. downstairs. I sat in the living room. I said it. I, I slipped upright, uncomfortable, so I wouldn't, you know. You just got to shower, change your clothes, and go to work. Right. And I went to work, and I got there on time Saturday, but, man, I was exhausted. <laughs> so Saturday, Saturday was, um, I got in this tangent, but sorry, you're stuck in the story now. That's okay. No, go you're fine. for it. So I Saturday. Got, I'll just let you know. Hold your thought. I, I don't know if you know Kevin Shahan. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin said this whole your life is going to be full circle he goes I can just see Abe when his retirement years he's going to end up owning a grocery store in his retirement <laughs> never <laughs> never never all right Kevin you heard it right from the man never. I asked him <laughs> never say never <laughs> never if anything if anything it'll be a little cantina in the DR called burritos and beer and I'm just going to work whenever I want to work <laughs> so so I, I make it to Saturday and Saturday in the grocery business is busy, right? So we had this little office in the front. I go get me a couple rolls of Charmin. I go to the office, I lie on the desk. I said, let me just see if I could sleep a couple hours and catch up. Phones ringing, doors knocking. I don't get any sleep, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't even have time to go to the concert. So after the concert, 
I, I go straight to Maria's hotel. She was staying at the Sheridan. I'll never forget. I told her, look, I, I got all my stuff still in my car from last night. You know, do you mind if I shower in your room? She was totally cool. Went up there, showered, changed. And then she rode with me and we, we followed the band to go to the Rosemont Theater to watch for the concert. Mm -hmm. We go to this concert, great concert. The village people are all awesome guys. We had a blast. And then they had an after party at Excalibur, downtown Chicago. So now we're at this after party. I stroll in the house almost 5 a.m. I gotta leave like in an hour and a half. Again, again. <laughs> wow. I said, let me just close my eyes uh -oh. for a little bit. Uh-oh. Right? That was Same it. chair. I figured it worked the night before, right? Safe. Same chair. I, I really hope my dad's catching the show. It's good guy laughing. Same chair. Same alarm. I gotta, I gotta be up. At 6.40, the latest, so I can get there by 7 and let everybody in so we get open by 7.30, uh -huh. okay? Man, all I know is I wake up, and the phone is just ringing. I look over, and it's 9 in the morning. <gasps> Ouch. Oh. Okay. Ouch. 9 a.m. Now, you got to understand, <laughs> this is not like, oh, hey, I'm showing up late for work. I need, like, at least 8 to 10 people to run a grocery business. These guys aren't there when I get there. I'm screwed. Yeah. Hell yeah. Right? I, I mean, I need two butchers. I need a produce guy. I need to go bag boards. I need two cashiers. I mean, it's not like I'm just showing up late for work. I'm screwed. Uh-huh. So I, I I answer the phone and it's one of it's one of my you know, our assistant managers at the time, I guess you would call him. And I'm like, I'll be there in 15. I hang up the phone on him. There's no cell phones in the day. I don't got a cell phone. Yeah. I jump. I mean, there was cell phones, but it wasn't common, right? So I jump in, I jump in the car literally in my underwear. I still got clothes in the car. <laughs> I'm doing like a hundred miles an hour, right? Changing it, trying to change it every red light. I get to the shop and thank God, dude. My staff, God bless them. They went to McDonald's, they had breakfast, I paid for everybody's breakfast. They all look around. We opened up the store. Mm -hmm. All right. I uh -huh. think I I'm, I got away with this. Uh-oh. Right. I, my dad calls, wait, wait, my dad calls from, from Detroit and says, hey, what's going on? I'm like, well, what's going on? What? He's like, we've been trying to call there all morning. I said, we've been here. I don't know. What's the problem? <laughs> like, wait. <laughs> wait. So back I then, like, interstate, calling, you know, interstate calling was a big thing. You had roaming. You had all this yeah, shit. Yeah. Yeah. So he just wrote off, oh, maybe it's because we're from Detroit and we're calling from out of state. He just wrote it off like it was a cellular issue. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happened. And then, and then, you know, he comes back on Monday. Things are normal. A week goes by, two weeks go by. Then one day somebody comes in. It's like two weeks later. I think I'm, I'm totally in the clear. And somebody goes, hey, whatever happened that last, oh, Mr. Roberts, come here, let me talk to you. You know, I had to shut him up, take him outside. No, no, we don't talk about that Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> don't bring it up. Don't talk about it. Offer he can't refuse. Right? <laughs> Two weeks later, I'll never forget. My dad calls me up. He's changing out the drawers for one of the cashiers. He says, I need a roll of quarters. He hands me. Start walking to the back. I'm, I'm in the last aisle of the store, halfway down. And at the top of his lungs, I hear him scream my name. Uh-oh. Like, oh. This is like a month later. I'm thinking nothing of the event. I start walking back, man. And my dad used to say this thing when he gets mad, this jawbone would pop out. So you knew something was screwed. Mm -hmm. And I said, what's up? He goes, when I went to Detroit, did you open the shop late? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> um, if I had to hear how I was the most unresponsible human being in the world. Dude, I'm telling you, he was devastated for a month. He wouldn't let me live it down. And my argument to him was, dude, I, I partied with KC and the Sunshine Band and the village people. I don't think 20 years from now, no one's going to give a shit. I mean, I get it. It's not, it's a bad thing, but it's not that serious. And 20 years from now, you're not even going to remember this. What's funny, is, what's funny is when I tell him the story now, he doesn't remember it. So I'm like, yeah, you see? Maybe uh, <laughs> he doesn't want to remember it. Right? So I mean, I've always been gregarious. So that's what I loved about the cigar industry. So when, you know, I just like being in people business. So, um, when, when he told me to stay down here, I'd already met the guys, the regulars. I just kind of fell in love with it. And I just didn't go back. And like, literally on day 12, my father called me, he says, a am I crazy? Are you supposed to be back in Chicago now? And I went, yeah, about that. 
<laughs> basically told him I wasn't coming back. He was pissed. He disowned me. Um, I flew back two months later to go load up everything I could in my red Jimmy I had at the time and drove back to Florida. That's how I ended up in the cigar business. Wow. 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 That's a story. story. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, your dad made his point. He yep. forgot about it, but you're still talking about oh, it. Oh, I'll never forget. <laughs> we're still carrying the weight of that. <laughs> yeah, it's a pinnacle moment in my life. I let my dad down. I mean, seriously. I mean, literally, he didn't talk to me for a month. He was wow. so livid. Oh, man. He's from that old school. There is none. It's unacceptable. Right. You know? it's, right. It, it is. Do it. And I agreed with him. It's unacceptable. Get mad, but man, get over it. I mean, it's not like <laughs> it's not like I went partying with my my friends and got hung over. I was hanging out with the village people in case <laughs> in the sunshine band. I mean, give me, give me a little slack. You were somebody for forty eight hours. Yeah, right? it was a monumental life moment. You know, yeah. it's a landmark <laughs> moment. Let me, you know, I'm a little tired. Like, so that was it. Six. Is that like right before you uh, uh, got involved in the cigar business? That that yeah, whole. I, I had gotten involved in Chicago before. What happened was I, I started distributing cigars in Chicago. This is before I moved down here, before I was even starting to open up a shop. Um, I had an uncle who had a liquor store. He knew I was getting into cigars. He always saw me smoking a cigar, enjoying a cigar. And it just so happened that one of my brother's siblings' father was a big distributor in Chicago at the time. Um, guy, a guy by the name of Bob Ash, who's a retailer now, has a, a place in Chicago called The Ciggery. And um, Michael Baker, I grew up in Niles, Northwest suburbs. Oh, yeah. And, so, and Kevin, right. after your story, Kevin wants to know, uh, how did Gabe, how did Abe meet his wife? I never heard that story. All right. We're talking about Kevin Shan. So you I'm know, gonna, I'll, I'll, give you that list. I'll give you that story too. <laughs> So, but let me finish the question. So what happened was my uncle had a liquor store. It was right around the boom. He calls me up and says, look, everybody's coming here asking me for cigars. Can you put something in here? I said, yeah, let me figure something out. Mm -hmm. So I ordered him this six foot humidor. He had a nice size liquor store. I went to Bob Ash. I didn't have a tobacco license. I didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. We're beyond the, uh, uh, oh, yeah. Statue yeah. Limitations yeah. is over. Yeah. Yeah. Right about it. We're, uh, you know, what is it? A hundred miles off. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we're okay. I don't think I don't think they're going to extradite me at this point. So, um, I I I didn't have a tobacco license. And I just went in there and paid him cash, and he sold me a bunch of cigars. So I lined up this big humidor with cigars, and I figured, see you in six months, Unc. Yeah. <laughs> Guy calls me back like 10 days later. He's like, it's all gone. I said, what do you mean it's all gone? Who stole it? Because <laughs> we didn't sell it. We didn't know we stole it. We sold it. Wow. Are you kidding me? That's so I said, incredible. oh, hey, this is an idea. So what I then did, and I, at one point, I think I had like 38 or 39 accounts, almost 40 accounts in Chicago. I went to every liquor store. It was called Cigars Direct. That was my little unincorporated name. <laughs> um, I went to every liquor store, country club, restaurant. And I would just say, hey, you should sell cigars here. I don't know nothing about my company's real easy, man. You just tell me what you want. Two feet, four, three feet, four feet, five feet, six feet. I could put an eight foot in here. I'll fill it up. It won't cost you a dime. I'll come once a month. We'll do inventory. You keep 15% or whatever you sell. And that's what I did. And that's how I started distributing in, in Chicago before I ended up moving down here. And then after I moved down here, my dad did the, did the thing where he tried running my accounts for a while and collected <laughs> the money for me and everything. It was really cool. But, uh -huh. you know, when you're not there, competition ends up start picking your accounts off one by yeah, one, yeah, and, one. Yeah. and then it just yeah, wasn't yeah. worth it and we let it go you know but that's how i that's how i started selling cigars in chicago before i moved to florida even wow that's, that's a good nice. story though that's incredible Very so interesting. Kevin, kevin wants to know how i met my wife so <laughs> i met my wife true story the first two weeks i was in florida right after i moved here huh. okay yep I, I i went out my couple of my friends took me out to dinner my wife was there. My wife was uh, 19, just turned 19, or going to turn 19 the following month. So I moved in July. She turned 19 in August. I was 26. Mm -hmm. And I was just enamored. This is a great girl. We had a great conversation. We ended up talking, having drinks after we had dinner. I didn't have, I went to dinner with friends and she was there. And then we, we met after dinner. And she held and rubbed my hand the whole time we were talking. I'm like, wow. And I asked her if I could take her to dinner. And she said, no. <laughs> In fact, my wife, my wife didn't believe I was 26 and actually carded me that night. 
Huh. I had to show her my driver's license because she thought I was way older. And um, she let me take her to lunch. Um, we ended up being very close friends for the next five years. Like, I mean, we just, I mean, it, it, you know, she was smarter than me. I think most women are in that age when, you know, men are the way they are. I, you know, of course, I wanted to date her. I was trying to get in her pants. I was doing whatever I can. <laughs> and, I, and I wanted to have a relationship with her because I thought she was an amazing girl. But, you know, we were at different stages. Even though I was only 26, I was kind of already an old soul. All my friends from the shop were in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. I, I wasn't hanging around with anybody my age, you know. And she was 19, man, in South Florida, you know, having the time of her life. I think, if, I think had we ever started dating earlier on, it would have been a catastrophe. It never would have lasted. Um, and then I don't know what happened, but like five years later, she had a situation. She was going to go to the air force and something happened and she needed a place to stay. I'm like, yeah, I, I work all day. You want a house that can stay. No one's ever here. She ended up moving in the day before Thanksgiving. And by kind of January, we were dating and we dated for five years. And then I proposed. Wow. And that's a, that's a whole other story within itself. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I have the record. Like I have, I, I could say undisputedly, I have the Guinness book of world record of how long you could go before proposing to a woman before the meltdown. <laughs> because I, I, I literally made it to the edge of the cliff. And I'm not kidding you. This girl in five years that we were living together never once ever hinted pressured well first off when i met my wife i mean she was adamant she never wanted to be married never wanted to have kids so you know now 14 years of marriage and four kids later that didn't hold up that well but, <laughs> but, but you know she never hinted about marriage or sitting down so it was it was valentine's day and we went to i, I had gotten a ring and I had to lie to get in this place that you couldn't get into. And I waited to the last minute like an idiot, but it, it worked. They got me in. And um, it was a 930 Valentine's Day reservation. We had this wonderful dinner. They had a botanical garden behind it. And we went for a walk. And we get to the gazebo. I had this ring in my pocket. I'm getting ready to propose to this girl. Right? I mean, I don't think any guy ever pictures that day. Right? Girls girls think about it. Oh, they a little girl. Right? We <laughs> never think about that day. Like, you know, well, it's married now. No, we're not going to. It Wait, never enters our mind. Avoid it. Right? Avoid it. <laughs> Completely opposite spectrum. So, <laughs> so I literally, I'm about to propose to this girl. And she starts at, at that moment saying, you know, I've been thinking. So I went, really? What's so big? You know, we've been together now five years. And I think at some point, we just have to start the next stage in our life. And, you know, I, I, I don't want to pressure you. I'm not pressuring you, but I mean, if you want to have a bet, and I'm saying to myself, is this a fucking joke? Am I on the <laughs> camera? I mean, after five years, you pick now to talk about going to the next level. So, you know, being the cocksucker that I am, I go the other way now. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, no, babe, we're young. You know, people are getting married nowadays. They're having kids later. We're not in a rush. And I can see her trying to keep it all cool and collective. Doesn't want to ruin. No, no, but babe, you know, we're not that young. And this is kind of going back and forth for a while. And finally, I said, I, 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 I got to let this go off the hook. So then she said something. I can't remember the exact phrase, but she asked me like a question. What you need to ask yourself is this. And then I went, no, that's not the right question. She's like, what? Said, that's not the right question we really should be asking at this moment. Said, what are you talking about? I said, well, that's not the right question. I think this is the right question. And then I pulled my ring out of the pocket and I asked her to marry me. Bro, first time since I ever met the girl, she was speechless. She couldn't believe it. Because if I thought I was on candid camera before, she definitely thought she was on candid camera at the moment. So I'm fortunate enough to have even a, a pretty cool proposal story. I mean, literally, I couldn't have timed it more to the wire. Awesome. Congratulations. Very that good. is awesome. Very Thank good. you. Very good. And we met your wife, lovely lady. Yeah. So Thank you, you definitely uh, see your family. You got together a fantastic uh, family all together with your children and all. So congrats. I so feel it worked I feel, out well. I feel very blessed. I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, things are looking good. And uh, 
So you got the family going. That's a big uh, grand slam. How's smoking doing? Well, it's been a crazy year. Yes, you know, it's, it's been it's been a, a, a crazy year, a year that no one could have predicted, a year that nobody could have expected. Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm assuming at this point we're kind of we've, we're exiting the, 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 the cave. We're, we're coming into the light. Coming but, around um, the corner. We're coming around the corner. But um, I could say that I think we did it with uh, very minimal scars. You know, I mean. We retained almost, we really retained everybody. I lost one guy who went on to a better job, which you always want for your staff anyway. And he's still a friend and he's a great guy, but we retained everybody. We kept pretty much everybody almost paid all the way through. And I think it was a very short period of less than a week for some of our, most of our people. Bartenders are the people who got hurt the most and we yeah. tried to keep them employed as much as possible. Um, just doing other various tasks. Um, Have you been but, open the whole time? No, no. We the first thing we did was close for about five weeks. Oh, really? Wow. All these shops? All of them. Wow. Oh, wow. Five cow. five weeks of nothing. Holy cow! Yeah. Now we did keep the mail order going, and honestly, if it wasn't for that, this would have been a more crippling period for us. But um, we managed to have really some exponential growth in our mail order business. I think our mantra and our philosophy of, of customer service above all else has prevailed and resonated throughout the community. And a lot of people have found us and um, we, we managed to retain a lot of that business. And now we're in the process of building a warehouse because oh. I mean, I, I got a video, I could show you our whole distribution. Half my retail space is now a distribution center on our floor, right? Right outside this window. I mean, it's insane. In fact, I, I mean, I took a video because looking at it is just like crazy. Um, I took a video of this. I haven't had a chance to post it on Facebook, but it's so, it's so insane. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. I saw that earlier. Yeah, yeah. No, but oh, well, that's a lot of boxes. That's a hell of a lot of boxes. <laughs> uh, that's Wait, you know, and, and, and then we got all these shipping containers in the beginning. This is, oh, on, my, oh. this is on my this is on my floor. This is on my business floor, a retail floor. <laughs> that's awesome. So, no, if you so, need a warehouse. It's blessing. <laughs> if you need you know, anybody running the Orlando shop or help, you know, I know Frank might. Uh, I don't have a shop out. in Orlando. That's our other friend. <laughs> <laughs> but no, th that helped us a lot. And that helped us um, honestly survive. And, but, you know, we had to pivot. You know, we had to focus on our, our thing. I mean, right now we're in the middle of a, a Pete Johnson virtual event. We, you know, we, we changed it. You know, we were doing events the same day and then trying to squeeze all these orders into an hour and a half, and that was insanity. So we did this one differently. It started Monday at noon, and it was still semi-insanity. And, and and it's going through till tomorrow night. So uh, we had some rare product. A lot of that went. There's still some cool rare packages available, but all Pete Johnson's regular product um, is at a, an event discount. So it's about the cheapest you'll, you'll ever get it. But most of the excitement is that people are trying to get his hand on on, on, on his event only cigar. I, I'm smoking one just oh, wow. out of tribute. Oh, Halloween. Nice. The this shrunken is the, pumpkin. This is the shrunken pumpkin, and it's free with any purchase, one with every five cigars. So on top of an incredible box discount, you're getting the free pumpkins. And then tomorrow night, every purchase gets you some raffle tickets. It's all explained on the site. But then tomorrow night at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, Pete, we're going to do a live virtual herf with Pete. And at 8.30, all these sales that have come in over the last few days, we're going to randomize it. And I got like three epic autographed prizes that we're giving away tomorrow night. So, but it's stuff like this. You but know, it, it, is it, up and running though. I mean, as far as the store, the retail part. Okay, so what happened with us in the retail part is we closed for five weeks. Then after five weeks, we said, let's open. And then we opened. Then they came in, they said, you had to shut the bar. So we had four bartenders, we had to shut the bar again. Mm -hmm. oh, and then, then one night they came in and they said, uh, they literally like, I had five people in the shop at night. It was 9.30 at night. There was maybe five or six people and 12 people, if not 15 people came in from the county and kicked everybody out and closed us down. Oh, wow. they, they said, even though the bar wasn't open, no one could be sitting in the lounge. So then we huh. did cash and carry only for the longest time. Okay. So now we're hitting September. 
and pretty much, you know, haven't had much retail business for this whole time. And um, Palm Beach County issues an order. I was on the local news three times in three weeks. Hmm. Um, Palm Beach County issued an order that they were going to five phases. Okay. And they listed the five phases out. The fourth phase was at the end of November. The fifth phase, we don't know where that, they didn't even put a date on it. So that could have been December. It could have been next January. Uh -huh. And if you believe it or not, in that fifth phase was exact verbiage of cigar bars and hookah lounges. Really? So between now and December, if my county had their way, comedy clubs, gyms, bars, restaurants, grocery store, I mean, everybody was going to open, but we were the biggest threat to <laughs> wait to open until December. You kidding? What? Unbelievable. No. Wow. So on September, on September 14th, <clears throat> the governor put the state in phase two, which meant people could open with 50% options. Now, the problem was when this whole mess started, the governor had given the county's authority to say, look, this is what the state's requiring. If your area is more in stress, you know, stressed and, and, and it has problems, as a county, you could go more. And that's what Palm Beach County did. They went more. So on the 14th, my kids get to go back to school. Okay. So I got kids going back to school. People are opening up, but Palm Beach County still doesn't want me to open up. Wow. And then on the 21st or 28th or a week later, DeSantis just went on TV and said, look, this is done. The state's open. People have a right to work. They have to go out work. No one could tell any business in the state of Florida to close. Great news. If you've been fined, you don't have to pay the fine. Ooh. I mean, he made a big thing. He stepped it up. So really, it's just been the month of October. I mean, since the end of September that we've been like fully open and functional. Okay. Well, oh, he God. seems like a pretty nice guy, though. Well, I mean, look, I, I don't know if any politician's a nice guy. <laughs> I think it takes a certain better read. Better than some of the others. How about that? <laughs> but I, I don't have a problem with his policies. You know, he got rid of core core math and core education. Oh, that's a joke. Yeah, he got rid of some. He, he helped the, the Florida prepaid program because it was insane at some point. People couldn't afford to put prepaid for Florida for their kids. And it was supposed to be an economic way. He changed that. So I, I'm in line with his policy. I don't mind him as a governor. I'm all right with him as a governor. Um, but... Honestly, if you're a business owner, he's got to be your hero right now. Otherwise, we'd still be closed, especially in Palm Beach yeah, County. Really, absolutely. Yeah. So um, things are looking back to normal. I mean, our Thursday and Friday nights and Saturday nights at the bar may never be. It might be a long time before it'll be the way it was. But, I mean, you don't understand as a retailer how it is walking out there for those months and not hearing a sound. Wow. Kind of sold scary. After all these years, there's nobody there all did, the time. Did you guys ever try and set up outdoor uh, seating? Wasn't allowed. Outdoor? No, I, got, I don't have to set up. I got okay. beautiful outdoor seating. Okay. You yes, you do. You see I got, I got $3,000 oh, in, in outdoor furniture, plus maybe fifteen. Beautiful seating. There wasn't allowed. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Wasn't That's allowed. amazing. The night we were there, his whole outside was jammed. Yeah, I mean, the first place we went to sit down, it was like, okay, that's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> that's why we went to sit down inside, and there's Rudy Giuliani hanging out. Yeah, you know, cool. so that's that's one thing. So outside was so busy, it kept us on the inside. We got to hang out with Rudy and took the pictures and everything. And we also, uh, got to hang out, and we met a, uh, um, I think you know, um, how do we met there, Brent. Brent down there, he comes Bloom, down to yeah. you. Brent Bloom, are you familiar with him? Most likely by face. Yeah, yeah. Probably. okay, <laughs> Brent is down there a lot, and he know, he does the whole circuit and everything, and uh, it was a, just a fantastic night. Uh, your salespeople were fantastic with the cigars. Actually, you had an event there that night. Yeah, LTD was, was there. That's right, yeah. Remember, Frank, you bought a whole... Yeah, La Florida Dominicana was there, yeah, and it was a great event. Uh, I have a good question for you, Abe. Uh, yes, sir. Cappuccino. You guys sell a lot of cappuccino. You couldn't even sell cappuccino during the pandemic. And I know you have a, an incredible uh, paying attention to detail. Tell me that story about getting a cappuccino machine in your store. <laughs> well, I mean, look, there's certain, there's certain things that when I personally have a vested interest in it, it's got to be to the best I can make it. Like, 
you know, our Cigar of the Month Club is, is one of those things. That's my personal baby. It's going to be the best that can make it because I'm that, that's my project. So a cappuccino is one of my things. When I was working in West Palm Beach before we opened up Boynton, there was a place down at the end of this place called John Bull. They made the best cappuccino I had ever had. I mean, like ruined it. He was like, I would have two or three a day. So when I came here, I wanted the same machine. I wanted the guy who serviced them. And it was, it was a guy I still deal with today. His name is Mimo. We call him Mimo. He's literally, I mean, he's like, he's a Seinfeld character. He's great. Um, <laughs> if, you've been, if, you, if any of you have been to the Great Smoke, he's always the little coffee vendor who makes espresso and stuff in between the two buildings. He's always out there. You, if you met him, you can't forget him. Um, but yeah, I mean, and, I, and, and whether it's the foam, whether it's the cinnamon, um, they're, they're works of art because I like a cappuccino. Same thing about our Bloody Mary. I got into Bloody Marys. I wanted to make a Bloody Mary for the shop. And um, I had to, I came up, I researched all a bunch of recipes. We make ours from scratch, no mix. And then for the toppings, I had to find stuff because we're not a restaurant. So I had to find stuff that would survive and not like go bad in two days, right? Or we had to cook. And we have a blood, a, a big delicious Bloody Mary, we call it. It's, it's like one of my favorites. And then my most recent little project was um, almost a year ago, we went to Napa Valley, my wife and I, and we went to, we stopped in San Francisco and went to the Buena Vista Cafe, which is an amazing little place and well-renowned for their Irish coffees. I'm not a big Irish coffee guy, but I heard you have to go there, which I did. And it was on a Monday night. And as we're walking up, the place is packed and everybody's drinking this Irish coffee. Like it's insane. I'm like, all right, let's go have this. So we drink this thing and it's like liquid crack. I'm like, what is <laughs> I mean, I mean, seriously, what is this drink? They have a big plaque outside. It tells you the whole history about Irish coffee. Invented in Shannon, Ireland at the airport and whatever. First bought to America in 1952 by a guy who ran the Buena Vista Cafe. How it became a national institution. But it's really where the first Irish coffee in America was made, right? So I'm enamored by this process. I'm taking videos of this, this guy. I'm talking to this guy. I'm asking him questions. These guys sell 2,000 Irish coffees every day and 2,500 on weekends. Wow. Every day. Every day. Hey, they're oh. lining them up 20 at a time. <laughs> I got a whole video. So <laughs> oh. I, I got I got all into this. I said, we have to, in fact, you know what? I'm going to show you guys. Hang on. <laughs> Frank, you did Here. some research on the man. Well, yeah, he's, he's a very interesting person. He's just so motivated. Hey, he's a people person. Can you have Anna bring me an Irish coffee? Okay. Thank you. So, <laughs> my wife and I had like, this is, this is just a quick stop before dinner. We had like six of these things. Six? Was, good, yes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I guess you didn't want to go to and then, you go to and then they make a version of it with, with screwball, the peanut butter whiskey, oh, which is like yeah. the worst. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, it took me four weeks just to get the glasses, the same glass. But the key to how they make their Irish whiskey, because I've been everywhere and it's, it, it tastes like crap. It tastes like rocket fuel half the time. <laughs> the key to it is the cold cream, heavy cream that they whip and it sits on top. Mm. So the hot coffee travels through the cold cream. You can drink it right away. You don't got to blow on it. But I, and it's an amazing combination. And I mimicked it. But at each of my bars, there's a big plaque that gives tribute to the whole history and the Buena Vista Cafe, because it's not my original idea. Mm -hmm. And it says, we are proud to continue the rich traditions and serve you Irish coffees in the same fashion as the Buena Vista Cafe mm -hmm. in San Francisco. And, and I'm telling you, it's like crack. Everybody you give to once, it becomes like their ultimate like drink. It's, it's, it's amazing. But so are you selling my creation? <laughs> are you selling 1,000 of them a day? <laughs> Not yet. I haven't marked them yet. Listen, we I've only had a bar for four weeks. So just, by the time I'd gotten back from Napa last year, we got the equipment. I did the reason. And then I got to teach my bartenders how to make it. It's the whole thing with the yeah. sugar cubes and the spoons because it's how they make it. It's part of the coolness too. By the time we got ready and we were going to make a video and highlight this, COVID hit. Uh, uh, COVID uh, hit. But you'll be seeing videos of it soon. Trust me. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, we yeah. did share your. Well, I uh, taste it, but <laughs> well, we have to go down there. I know. Yeah. We're, does he down. deliver? But, you know, we did share what, <laughs> what you got going on this week on our page, and I saw what you put out yesterday that you kind of ran out of the first order, and you know, you asked the people not to get mad and all of that stuff. And, well, it, it's always the guys who are hunting the rare, rare stuff, right? And I'll be honest with you: if you're a customer of ours and you know us, 
99% of the people were super understanding. Look, I didn't get it. I mean, it's just kind of way it is. It's a race. It's a race, which for a lot of us, that's half the fun, mm-hmm. right? It is. It's, it's always these guys who really aren't our customers and are trying to get something. And half of those guys typically go and resell it. They don't want it for themselves to smoke or enjoy. Those are the guys who really will make the biggest stink about stuff like that. Because, it look, it was still a great deal. And any of the regular production, and you got the pumpkin, which, by the way, I, I, I might have to swipe a couple of these from Pete because these are really good. <laughs> what do you taste um, like? What, what, what's in the pumpkin? What are you getting? Where are well, they hey, body-wise, it's not overpowering, right? So it's not a, a pepper bomb. It's not, it's not, it's, I mean, like, it's something I could enjoy at any time during the day. But it's complex, right? It's got good flavor and it's a little earthy, but I get hints of chocolate. I'm not one of these guys because I, I don't do that. I've never been a reviewer. Um, it's just, I'm, I'm kind of more like, I like the cigar. I could tell you that it's not overwhelming. It's not overbearing, but the flavors have changed and it's not boring to me, right? So that, that's what I enjoy. You know, I, you know, sometimes I like something simple. Sometimes I want something a little, just like my food. I like something a little more complex. Sometimes a, a good hot dog is great. You know, it just depends how it's it is. Brett hot dog, not that Vienna stuff. No, oh, Vienna all <laughs> beef. Drag through the garden, my friend. <laughs> yes. You have to have that snap. Yeah, uh, you got to have that snap. Into it. That's a New York thing. It absolutely it is. is. It is. <laughs> it is. No question. Well, could that possibly make its way into a regular line for you? I don't think. No, what, it's not me. It's <laughs> Pete Johnson. That's a Pete Johnson question, but I don't think he, he will. Um, and, and, and honestly, there's no need because th- these are good vehicles to have some excitement. I mean, we're in the virtual days. So to have something, and, and I think it's a model that you're going to start seeing more of. Because the, the psychology behind event cigars changed in the last couple of years. Event cigars would be anything that a manufacturer could make to give away that was low cost, that would have a high perception value. So if you bought a box, we'll give you 10 of our house brand cigars for free. Oh, really? I buy a whole box and give me 10 or more cigars for free? Not a bad deal. Box yeah, cigars. but I mean, <laughs> they weren't really worried about what they were making, right? Right. So now that philosophy has changed between Espinosa's event cigar, Sakis Pulpetta, P. Johnson, what these guys have now done, and I hope continues to trend because I like it, they're trying to make a really, really epic good event cigar that people will want instead of just making something basic or anything. Right, right. And that that will help drive sales. And it does. It makes things a little bit more exciting. You know, guys can't get the cigar. You have to be in an event. We don't have physical events. So... Everybody's been cool in doing this virtual stuff. And, you know, you had, you know, that's one of the things we had to do. We have to pivot, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm not having in store events. So we do these virtual events. We've always tried to do them differently. You know, one thing I try to do is try to do something different, a little, a little different, because I'm always experience driven. I got a couple of projects that are going to hit in the next month or so, which I think are going to be very exciting once the programming gets done. But I'm all about the experience. Experience is, is the driving factor. So, you know, one of the things like we're working heavily now, my team on, because tickets go on sale next week, I think, um, is the Great Smoke. Yeah. You know, after 15 years, we have to go to a virtual Great Smoke, right? And I've seen already a few virtual events, and that's not doing it for me, right? I don't uh, don't want to do a virtual event, but we are. So what can we do? What can we do so that it's, a new experience and we're going all out and I'm, I'm literally and anybody who's listening, pay attention because this will end up being the most historic thing the industry ever, ever sees, or it'll be an epic flop. Either way, it should be entertaining. So, I mean, <laughs> well, you know, it can get people by saying, you know, promise them your pre-embargo cigars will be given away. <laughs> I, I've never been a, I, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't like the storytelling. You know, it's legit. It is what it is. That's why I think our cigar, of the Month Club, is 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 successful because it's it's transparent and it's real and it's natural. There's no made up stories about what it is. And um, this great smoke. It, it, look, if you haven't read the press release, I can't even verbally say the, the what I'm picturing in my head, but it's it's formulating. I think on paper, our plan strategically is epic. I think it's going to come down to execution. Of course, with, with technology, I'm always petrified. Um, 
but we're planning, imagine if you will, and you guys are all old enough, no offense, um, the Jerry Lewis telethon meets QVC. Oh, event, yeah, absolutely. Right? So that's what we're doing. It's an eight-hour broadcast extravaganza, and it's not a low, there she is. Come on. This is another group. Oh. So this is Anna. Hello. Hey, Anna. How you doing? Hello. How are you? Hello. I want to show you the beauty of this Irish coffee. Oh, look at that. Looks nice. Now, that is heavy whipping cream that is cool. It almost tastes like ice cream. That's sitting on top of this Irish co coffee. Um, and it's really simple. It's not a hard recipe. It's in the action of making it that's really difficult. The ingredients are simple. And this thing is epic. And it's like the biggest hit down here. And yeah, I don't want to start marketing it. It almost looks like a Guinness. Mm. <laughs> short beer, like a... Uh... Oh. It's like candy. It's delicious. Wow. Yeah. Rub it in. Rub it's it delicious. in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, you made me get one, so thank you. Yeah, salute. <laughs> salute. <laughs> drink, drink. All right. Now we no, just I mean, look, I we, need that the, delivered look, up here to Chicago. <laughs> the production here, yeah, right? Kyle, right? So the production can't be like what we're seeing here, right? It can't be like what I do my KMA show, right? The production has to be like the Tonight Show, right? So we actually got a company called Showtech, which is another petrifying thing for me, because this is really a big outfit. These guys have done the Golden Globes, um, the mm. Kings of Comedy, Soul Train. The guy who runs the company has actually been a 30-year-old friend of my operations manager. He, he, he's excited. He wants to do this. Okay. But these guys are all over the country doing stuff. And sometimes I need to ask him a question. I don't hear back for two weeks. It drives me nuts. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's petrifying me a little bit, right? Um. So we're going to do this big to do this production. I've gotten amazing support from all the guys in the industry. And I, and I, I know half of them, at least half of them have no idea what I'm talking about. They just, they're banking on my track record of doing epic events and crazy stuff. And they're just in, some of them have grasped it, they're excited about it. Um, and we have select manufacturers who are making like, like not like, oh, I'm just rebanding. They're making some epic stuff for this event. Um, and Carlito and Puente, event? I'm sorry? What's the date of the event? So this is the way it's going to work. Um, but like some of these products, like even Carlito Fuente uh, on the Marifel show, I can't remember if it was on the Marifel show on our show, but like he basically said, we're making something special. The Great Smoke that no one's ever going to be able to buy again. And he basically challenged every manufacturer. Like, I challenge any manufacturer to do it. So guys are getting excited about what we're doing it. I just got a text today, a press release will be going out a couple of days. Because look, this is an eight-hour event. So I need a co-host. And I think the co-host that we got is going to make epic news. I would announce it now, but I couldn't get all the details because I got a simple text. And I said, well, let me call you back. I'm in a meeting. And he's like, well, I'm just having dinner with the family. We'll talk tomorrow. So I was okay. going to tell you guys tonight, but I don't have all the details to confirm that we're talking about the same thing. Okay. But this is going to be untraditional. Right. We're going to have comedians. We're going to have demonstrations. There'll be an interactive component. We're going to send this party in a box. So if things go the way I plan on going, we're going to broadcast this to the world, whether you bought a ticket to the event or not. OK, oh, I, no. I, it's too much money and in, in work invested in this. I want the world to see this production. Right. So if you're just an outside consumer, you'll be able to watch. Now, our party in a box, like I like to call it, which is going to have 40 premium cigars and i've seen I mean, i'm just saying it outright i saw cigar internationals 30 cigars that they sent everybody 10 of those i wouldn't ever smoke or give to anybody even somebody i didn't like right <laughs> these are i'm not talking them down it just what it is what it is it's their house brand it's, it's you know it's just it's just, look that's yeah. the model these are 40 top premium cigars and tons of other swags they're gonna be little interactive kits so at some point during the show, there's going to be a presentation and then you pull your stuff out of the box and interact. So everybody in the country may be making the same cocktail at the same time. Wow. We, we, I'm just telling you, it's, it's, a, it's like, I can't even tell you. We got a great company called Feed the Party that's working with us. They're, they're guys, I don't know if you've seen my unboxing videos, but I order my pork chops and my fillets. So these guys are out of Kentucky. They're great. Feed the Party. The best pork. I'm not a pork chop guy. I just had some last night, to be honest with you the best pork chops ever, they're involved. So we're going to have a campaign where we want people to throw watch parties and tell us why your watch party is going to be the coolest watch party. And we'll not only blow you up on the big screen and zoom you in during the event, 
feed the party, we'll feed your party. I said, you hold me box for your party. Wow. Oh, wow. Very cool. Holy cow. I, uh, look, we're going to promote I, this, you know. We're going to throw this on our page. I, I, I can, it's listen, the date and, it's, and time. We are in 20 countries formulated. around the world, just to let you know. It's all being formulated, but the tickets go on sale next week where you get the party in the box. I mean, we did the math today. It's literally like almost $450 worth of stuff. I think it's going to be like $169, which includes the shipping to get it to you, mm, which wow. we're sending everybody signature confirmation. The box will come the week before the event. So, you know, that alone is a steal of a value, right? Yeah. They'll have a lot of commemorative yeah. stuff in there. They'll have stuff that we made that's not even all here, like the official Great Smoke shot glasses, wow. hats, shirts. Oh, it'll be a hell of a box. Now, at the Great Smoke every year, every there's going to be a separate portal, right? Because guys are going to want to make purchases, right? There's going to be a separate portal. So it won't be through smoking.com. All, all the sales for the day will go through the Great Smoke. But like the special stuff that Carlito makes and some of these other manufacturers that are going to be Great Smoke event, if you do not buy a ticket to the event, you will not have access to make these purchases. Okay. 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 Yes. So you have to buy a ticket, even though you'll be able to watch the show. These cigars are strictly for people who bought tickets to the event and are interactive during the event and are participating in the event. Um, but we will have we'll have the promotions that we normally have for people who attend the Great Smoke on the participating brands. Those will be available for anybody. So if somebody wants it to be an eight hour sale of of just those manufacturers' products. But if those manufacturers have extra added Great Smoke swag, it won't be available unless you bought a ticket to the event. There'll be a code that you'll have to enter in when you're making your purchase that'll give people who actually bought a ticket to the event and be able to interact with the event have access to a lot of cool stuff that people who are just watching won't. So like I said, this will either be the most historic, crazy thing this industry has ever seen, or it's just going to be an epic failure. Either way, it should be entertaining. I feel it'll, it's going to be a blast. I feel like it's going to survive. It'll actually take off because um, I've actually taken part in a, a couple of breweries that do that. You have to buy their golden ticket into their event just to buy, uh, you know, like a six pack or twelve pack of this special beer that they're they're having. Um, well, the nice they, thing is the ticket to the event is the party in a box, which yeah. comes with. Uh, 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 the, the case that holds the 40 cigars is one of these cigar traveling vaults. Okay. That's a $35, $40. I mean, the value of the stuff you're getting for the $169 yeah. delivered oh, yeah. um, is ridiculous. So that's a deal within itself. Mm -hmm. But then by, by being a supporter of the event, you'll have access to some pretty crazy epic stuff that's going to be made for this event. So And the pork yeah. chops don't come with the cigars, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. But you can win a box and feed the party can feed your party. <laughs> yeah. so that's what we want to do because even though we can't have the social aspect of here, we want guys who, like in Chicago, you guys, we want you guys to get together and watch it together and make an event out of it. And if you, if you convince us why your party is going to be the best one, not only we put you on air, but the fine folks that feed the party will feed your party and send you a whole it's a tomahawk ribeye it's filet man he sent me the whole box so oh, it's nuts oh, yeah it's crazy wow oh man so when are the people should stay on smoking or like get on your facebook page the best way the best way to stay the best way to stay tuned as to what's going on is go to the great smoke.com enter your email for updates that would be the best way and follow the great smoke.com regarding great smoke stuff i mean obviously we push it through our smoke in social media as well. But if you really want to stay on top of the great smoke, that's the best way to do it. The event is February 20th. It's Saturday. Somebody's asking me the event is Saturday, February 20th. We will have a small live audience locally because you can't, it's going to be like the tonight show. There's only four different sets, right? So um, we're going to have a small live audience, probably 50 people tops. Um, just because this kind of event, you want the feel of a live audience, right? Yeah. And we want some interaction with a live audience. But I think that's going to be mostly local people. I, I don't expect anybody to fly in because the way things are currently, we don't have, normally it's a four day event. You know, the parties start on Thursday night yeah. and go through Sunday. We don't have nothing planned because even as we speak, you know, the, the, the rates of people getting COVID is going back up. So we don't know how the state's going to react. But, you know, as we get closer to the date, and it looks like 
things are still normalized and whatnot, we may plan like a pre-party or do some events, but that's not part of the ticket. So like, I, you know, and I'm so paranoid because I get messaged every day and people ask, you know, hey, we want to book our flights. What when, what date do you have? I'm like, man, whoa, we put out a press release last month. There's there's no physical event, yeah. you know? And I got to explain it to them. So part of that, I just had a meeting with my team today. Before anybody buys a ticket, we're putting a pop-up. Hey, this is a virtual event. Yeah, you know, yeah. Do not come to Florida. You know? <laughs> so, and, yeah. you know, this is so exciting news. And Pretty there's so cool. much more when I want to talk to you. But I got to take a, uh, a, 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 break a break here for Kyle because our shows usually run an hour, but we need to take a little sponsor break. So Kyle, can, we can continue because I do want to talk to everybody about the KMA show and everything else. So Kyle, I'm going to give you, can you stick around a little bit, Gabe? Hey. I got no I got, I got a whole Irish coffee I got to finish. All right. <laughs> Kyle, would you go ahead and uh, do the, the three um, sponsors again, like we're starting the show? And this way, give us also a break. So this way, when you're doing the tape and cuts and Frank on the YouTube and all of that stuff, let's go to that, folks. Hang loose. We're going to come right back because there's so da, much da, more. Da, 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 da. <laughs> go ahead, Kyle. <laughs> Take it away. Our sponsors are DAV Cigars out of New York. Decades of experience combined with true love and deep understanding of cigars result in the highest level of standard of each DAV hand-rolled cigar. Next sponsor is RNA Treasures out of Tampa Bay, Florida. The last of a legacy. The last inventory from Thomas Cristiano in a warehouse where everything is aged and well kept for all your pipe and smoking needs. And finally, the Chicago Pipe Collectors Club. One of the largest and oldest pipe groups in North America with the largest pipe show worldwide. Every first weekend in May, Always looking for new members, and if you're interested, please contact via Facebook. And now, back to you, Ron. Welcome back, folks. Oh, what an incredible guest we're having. The one, the only, Honest Abe. And I can tell you, all the stories, he's been saying it honestly. So it's part <laughs> of his deal. And uh, he's just got so much to talk about. And Abe... Uh, we, we want to thank you. The four of us want to thank you so much for coming on board and joining us and uh, giving us a little bit of your personal life, which we really appreciate. And I know everybody is really uh, just on the edge of their seats about this uh, event that's coming on on February 20th and uh, information about getting the tickets. Uh, I, for one, will be buying one of those tickets because uh, it just sounds fantastic. Yeah, count me in, too. Thank you, guys. Yeah, <laughs> be part of history. We're hoping to make history here. That's what we're hoping. Well, we want to be history, too, because we want to podcast that show. We want to share it and to our audience. So we want to get all this information. And uh, you guys could go on the Smoking uh, uh, website to get more information. Go on uh, the, the Great Smoke for more information and just join us and we'll constantly keep giving you information and updates as we hear them. What time does so, it actually kick off? The, 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 the broadcast or the sale, yeah. the broadcast right now, the tentative time is from 12 to 8 PM Eastern standard time. Gotcha. So that's the eight hour window. We're looking to broadcast the 12 to 8 PM Eastern standard time. And then the new site, which I've seen it, it's pretty cool because the theme is the digital experience this year. Um, it should be up November 2nd with all the new information. Now, the, the, on the left, you'll see a timeline. It's not finalized, but before the event, you'll know by the 15 minutes what we're doing, whether it be a liquor demonstration, whether it be a comedian coming on, whether it's Carlito coming on, because it's eight hours. Right. So we don't want you to miss somebody you really want to see. You know, okay. so it'll be all on a timeline. It'll be a program. So you'll know what to expect because the, the limited edition product that's being made, every manufacturer is doing one, will be coming into the studio to talk about it, and then it'll be available for a 30-minute ticker, just like QVC, and then it'll be gone. So we don't expect, it's all small runs, like 100 units, so we don't expect anything to last more than 30 minutes. So this way, people can time their life accordingly. If you got to run out, you don't want to miss a segment, because it's eight hours, it's a long day. So 
if you have to go to the bathroom, you can time that too. You could time your bathroom <laughs> break too. Absolutely. Well, I'm a sitter, so at least an hour's worth of showing I need to make. <laughs> hey, so, I have a question for you. When, when, uh, what kind of made you think about creating the event in the first place? I know that basically it's a way for you to give back. Uh, so what kind of motivated you to create the well, event 15 years ago? Oh, 15 years ago. Well, that was easy. Um, wow. Okay. That's a great story. So I had my 10th anniversary. Look, I, I was the first in South Florida to really do events in a crazy, stupid way. Like I made it a production, right? Live music. I didn't have bars back then. Free booze, catered food. It was like a big to-do. People would drive up from Miami all over Florida. I was doing an event every month, every month, and had 200 to 300 people easy. Wow. Right? It was crazy. You know, when we did our original Anarchy release, Pete Johnson and I were just talking about it. We'll probably talk about it during our Hearst tomorrow night. Like, I bought in a car for a junkyard and let everybody take sledgehammers to the car. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Because I've always been experience driven, right? Till this day, people still talk about it. I think a couple of my customers who tore off visors and side view mirrors still have it autographed from Pete Johnson. Oh. So, <laughs> you know, it was a crazy event. So I had started doing these, these crazy events. So I had a 10th anniversary. And I concocted this crazy idea to give away a Harley and how to do it. You had to buy this box that had 50 cigars in it. I think the box was $250. So it was a hell of a deal, 50 cigars, right? Let me see if I can remember this right. Was it 50 or 40? It might have been 40. 10 were made by Oliva. 10 in the box were made by Drew Estate, which I think at that time was Chateau Riel. Uh, 10 were made by Camacho, and 10 was made by Rocky Patel. It was four companies. Mm. Okay? And they came in this box. It had a medallion. So when you bought one of these boxes, which was a hell of a deal, it was like 40 cigars for 250 bucks. Wow. Yeah. You got a 1 in 50 chance of winning a Harley. Wow. wow. Okay. Right. Oh, so it was a crazy wow. event. So <clears throat> we had 800 people at this event. I'll oh. never forget. Wow. 800. 800. Wow. wow, man. That's a lot of people. Now, there was a guy in the industry. His name is Michael Argenti. I don't know if some of the people watching might recognize it. Michael Argenti was Nick Perdomo's brother in law, who was vice president of Perdomo Cigars for a while and then broke off on his own and did his own stuff. And I don't even think he's in the industry anymore. But he came to that event just as a spectator because Perdomo wasn't one of the companies. And then after this successful event where we had 800 people and everybody went up and talked and Marvin, and Samuel and Jonathan were there and Rocky was there and Christian Aro was there. And um, it was just a crazy event. And we gave away this Harley and we went out, partied afterwards. And Mike or Jenny was next to me. He's like, that's the most insane event I've ever seen. He's like, where do you go from here? How do you top that? This is what he said. Yeah. How do you top this? Because I have seen nothing like that. And I've been all over the country other than maybe some epic events that JR does. And even some of those aren't to this level. <laughs> and, and this is what he kept battering me with all night that Friday night. Saturday, I go to the shop. I'm hanging out. And his words are resonating in my head. I'm looking at this courtyard. We had this beautiful courtyard that was in front of my store that went from... Panera to Publix, huge area. And I'm looking at this, and I'm like, you know, Eric Espinosa had bought up to me about doing a big smoke type of an event in Florida. We could never find a venue. He probably, we had spent a year looking for it. Couldn't find anywhere that would allow us smoke. I'm looking at this courtyard, I'm like, I think I could do this event here. I think I take this, this big smoke concept and we do it here in this courtyard. I didn't even ask my landlord for permission, nothing. We just we just did it. <laughs> <laughs> it was insanity. Sometimes I look back at my history, I don't even know where my balls came from. I mean, literally. <laughs> so, this was outside. I'm talking to these manufacturers. I'm telling them what I want to do. They're all looking at me like I'm nuts. And they all signed up. Carlito Fuente was at the very first one. No coverage, right? This is out in the middle of the courtyard. I got fountain, I got tree no coverage we couldn't even anticipate the problems we had people just started coming parking cars and leaving them and walking away there was no way to get through in the shopping center the public's had a conniption the local <laughs> I mean, couldn't imagine the insanity of this event and you know i think the first one we had like 350 almost 400 people you know it wasn't 
it was crazy. Mm -hmm. But it was all in this little courtyard. Now, I'm not kidding you. The forecast every day was rain. Look, it was very creative. The tickets we sold were in duplicate form. I mean, there was no web at this point. So customers were buying this ticket. We're giving them a yellow copy, keeping a white copy to check them in later. It was like crazy. It was really crazy. So I had no graphics people at the time. I'm doing all the graphics myself. It was nuts. I don't know. I, I can't even imagine. All I, all I can tell you is this. When I conceived of this, this was after my 10th anniversary party, which is like September. So I come up with this idea. And then Christian Aroa, who was at my Camacho, who was at my 10th anniversary, tells me that Francois from Thompson, which is over on the other coast at the time, had flown into the Hard Rock here. Now, they just had their mega event at the Hard Rock over on the other coast. So now I'm all paranoid because I'm saying I'm, I got a whole year to work this event. I'm going to do this event in like September, October of the following year. Well, when I hear that he's come, he came here, which ended up being nothing, I guess he was just visiting. I got all paranoid that he was going to try to do his event here. So if he does his event first, mine is going to be... Uh, Second. That was yeah. good. So I put this all together between November and that February in four months. God. I got no staff. I got no graphic people. I got nothing. I don't even know how I did it, to be honest with you, looking back. I mean, it's just insanity, right? It's, it had to be divine inspiration. Well, you're a no. marketing specialist. That's what you are. I had no people. Right. I'm, hiring college kids. I'm, hi I'm hiring college kids from Kaiser University to help me out. I mean, it was crazy, but it's supposed to rain all week. I mean, all week. Uh. Forecast is all week rain, all the week. The event is on Saturday. All the way to Sunday, I said, "This thing rains, I'm ruined. I gotta give all these people their money back. I already got all these cigars. I mean, I just don't know what to do." I listened to every one of my friends. Every one of my, they all had their little superstitious stuff. My Italian said, "Put a Madonna in the window." <laughs> I mean, yeah, oh yeah, I did it all. I did it all, and I, and I, I kid you not, I, I, I kid you not. It was cloudy. It drizzled a little bit that morning. <laughs> And at like 11 a.m., an hour before the event, like by the grace of God, the sky parted and it was sunny. Wow. I went to church that Sunday. <laughs> I would imagine so. I hadn't been to church in like in 15 years. I went to church that Sunday. I, I couldn't believe it. And then it rained that Sunday too. Literally. Huh. It's like it just opened up for that event. And I got lucky. And 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 knock on wood, we really haven't. I mean, I'm I mean. I can't curse myself this year because it's indoors. But we haven't had bad weather in 15 years. One year it was supposed to be torrential downpour. Torrential downpour. Yeah. I bought 2,000 ponchos. I still got them in the house. I still got them in storage. 2,000 ponchos from six years ago. Because they said it was going to be torrential downpour every day of the week. It was like thunderstorms. It was impossible. It was going to be sunny. I already had a plan. This girl would be in a little tent as cars were driving up and people could roll their windows down and she could hand them all ponchos <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't it didn't rain uh, so I've been, I've been blessed and lucky in that aspect that's awesome that is maybe you can put some nice cigar graphics on those ponchos and sell them <laughs> I've, been, I, I've been waiting to have an online promo the rainy day promo i i, I don't know right. what to do. <laughs> but, 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 with this uh, the event that you're gonna have sell them with the uh, smoking in on the back Move them that way. I should. <laughs> but, you know, the key to that event, why it became a local one-day, four- or five-hour event to a four- or five-day event where we get 3,000 people and people come literally all over the world, is because we've always made it experience-driven. We've always wanted, we were always concerned about more about how can we make this an awesome experience than anything else. That's always been the priority. In fact, last year was the first time we ever did it because we're constantly thinking on how to make it better. And I don't think up until that, nobody's ever done it. We themed the event. It was the 70s and it was awesome. And our next lineup is going to be a Hawaiian luau, which we talked about last February. You know, for, obviously we don't want to waste it this year, the virtual one. So we're going to save the luau for 2022. But we're always trying to find ways to make it experience. And guys, guys go home, and they come back next year with five of their friends, and that's how it's grown. Sure, it's grown mostly. Yeah, I got a plethora of people I only see once a year. They're my they're my great smoke friends, man. They come every year. They'll come with all fourteen of their lanyards from every year, wearing <laughs> them all. I mean, it's it's. There's there's been epic great smoke stories. I had this one guy who now we're good friends, 
right? James, James from from Texas. We're we're good friends, or is it Phoenix? Can't remember. But <laughs> good friends. Good friends. I believe it's Texas, but he belongs to the Phoenix Cigar Line, so it could be Phoenix. But we're good friends because before we went digital, we used to mail these awesome tickets every year, and that was a nightmare. Tickets got lost in the mail. They, people would fly into town. They tell me, "Oh, I left my ticket home." I'm like, "Dude, if you go to the Super Bowl and you say you don't have your ticket, what do they tell you? They tell you to go fuck yourself." <laughs> you know, I don't know. It, it, it was it was always the worst part of this event every year that I went through, and and, and it would literally start like the second people started coming to town, and we've caught people lying. We, we've had tricks where we keep the tickets off. So we know the ticket number. So this one guy's claimed that he swore he didn't get it in the mail. So we gave him a second one. And then we were giving away 20 pounds of solid sterling silver shaped in the Great Smoke logo one year. So we wow. called up that ticket number, which he claimed he never got. And the guy comes running up. Ah! Oh, really? I thought you never got that ticket in the mail. I mean, you know, you know, we have our stories, but this is one of my favorite. So after about three days of getting bombarded with everybody who's lost their ticket, left their ticket at home. What can they do? You know, I mean, look, I, I'm stuck in a rock in a hard place. I kind of got to let these guys in, but it's like, you know, I mean, you know, there are people who are just not honorable and you just can't decipher. And then I'll never forget the morning of the event, people are lining and coming in. This one guy, James comes up to me and he goes, look, can I talk to you for a minute? I know you probably heard this. I'm like, here, here we go. He's like, look, I left my, I flew in. I left my ticket in my kitchen. I don't even want you to give me a ticket. I'm going to go walk over there. I'm going to go buy a ticket to come into the event today. But when I get home, if I mail you my other ticket, well, you're for my money. And I I was pissed. I didn't think of this earlier. Right? <laughs> I was so, I'm like, this was the most brilliant thing I ever heard. I'm like, I'm like dude, fuck buying a ticket. You go right in. <laughs> I, I literally told him, no, I want to buy a ticket. I said, fuck no. I said, that's the most honest thing anybody's told me in three days. No one, <laughs> only an honest person could think of something like, I said, you go right in. No, let me buy a ticket. No, you go right in, dude. I insist. You must go in. So, and, and he's like, I'll mail you a ticket. I said, no, keep it. You're good. Right? So he goes in, he comes back the next year and he brings the ticket with him. Wow. He, he made me autograph the ticket and it's framed wherever his clubhouse is and wherever it is now. That's, so, cool. that's cool. That's yeah, a cool story. Like, shit, nice. if I had thought of that myself, it would have saved me tons of headache. Right. <laughs> that alone was worth free entry. This is, sounds like it's going to be an incredible uh, event coming up, yeah, which you sure does. Um, we have a few. Uh, uh, cigar owners and salespeople on the line with us. Um, what kind of uh, cigars companies do you think you're going to have on this one? I can tell you now they're all okay. Uh, they're not listed on a site you could see, right. <laughs> but it's it's all the greats. I mean, listen, most of the guys have supported us for many many years. Um, let me see if I, I can. I, you can keep asking. Well, all right, that's okay. Not a problem. Yeah, you, you know, in case there's one that's not on the list, can they get involved? Oh, they, no, they, they, that process has been complete for over a month or two now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're a cigar manufacturer, we, we send out the invitations in, it's got to be August, early August. And before August is over, definitely in September, they're, they're, all the spaces are taken up. So, um, yeah. Now, we have... We have vendors who have always been in the Great Smoke. Kevin Sheehan, cigar prop, I think he's been there the last two or three years selling his product. Yes. So um, we do have, for guys who are selling ashtrays, I think we have one or two spots still left um, because this is like, this is a whole like telethon. So there are guys who will have like 15 minutes, will come on, show their wares, talk about their products. We interview them and all their products that they have available will be available Um for sale through the portal. So we, we, we are taking vendors who aren't cigar manufacturers. And if you're interested in that, just email email us. If you have a product, an ashtray cutter, lighter, we, we've seen it all over. So we the got years. lighters. There's, there's a few yeah. guys. If you have stuff that you would like to sell through the Great Smoke, and we're only doing a very limited amount of people, I think it's only six or seven slots, um, you can send an email to admin, A-D-M-I-N, at smokin.com, and we'll send you the kit. But 
you know, the whole beauty of it is you should be live here in Florida. So if you want to partake into it, I mean, we could just throw it up on the website, but you being live during the broadcast where we could talk to you, you could showcase your product, it would be the optimal thing for it. So anybody who's sending an email, keep that in mind. And who doesn't want to go to Florida in February? That's why our event's been successful. We get people from all over the country. <laughs> exactly. I mean, where else do you want to be in February? Exactly. Yeah. For manufacturers who want to possibly get in next year, what kind of a deadline uh, for response do they have? Well, the first part of that equation is, and this is where the business side comes in, as a company, we have to carry your product. Okay. So if we don't carry your product, you pretty much don't get an invitation because we want to, we're promoting brands that we normally sell. Sure. So if we carry your product, all you have to do is ask. We'll send you an invitation. But I think you carry just about everything. <laughs> well, look, I oh, can't I carry well, every humidor. <laughs> look, I, my old motto for many, many years is if we don't carry it, it's not worth smoking. I can't say that anymore. So I, I, that motto hasn't, we stopped using it. I think all my printed material that used to say that is gone because there's a lot of quality brands out there now more than ever. Especially and we just boutiques. don't. Yeah, a lot of boutiques. A lot of boutiques have really become very successful. Well, successful is a, a relative term. So, you know, for it to be successful at our level where we have a lot of choice, boutiques will flourish more in, in stores with smaller selections, right? When you throw a small boutique in one of our humidors, man, it needs somebody really putting a spotlight on it because it just gets lost. Unless you really have cultivated a following, which sometimes social media distorts the image of what kind of following you really have. Because let's face it, if you look at the cigar consumer universe, it's a very small sliver of us that are really active on social media. There are many, many cigar smokers who never interact on social media. So, right. you know, it, it's all relative. But, you know, over the years, I can't really say if we don't carry it, it's not worth smoking because there are brands I think I would like to carry, but we just don't have the linear footage. Now, with the warehouse that we're going to hopefully have open by February, March of <laughs> next year, um, I'll have the opportunity to sell stuff via web through our warehouse that I don't need to worry about having linear footage in my humidors right, right, right. to have the brand. So oh. our, our diversity and our portfolio of what we'll be able to offer our consumers will hopefully expand greatly, you know, in the first quarter of 2021. Makes sense. Makes sure. a lot of sense. Very cool. That's a, uh, that's a great idea. I think the, uh, the warehouse is going to be big. And plus when you get any orders from the warehouse, you're going to see what, who's going to move, what's moving. And maybe you can find some linear footage in, in your humidors you know it's two different universes what we have brands that don't sell locally in our store at all but but does well on on the web to other okay. you know other markets across the country so honestly well, i mean look I, I have 10 retail locations up and down the east coast of florida I, i'll tell you stuff sells 20 minutes away phenomenally and then in this location won't sell at all so imagine when you spread that across the country how that works out yeah you know, that makes sense so yeah, there there are stuff that we there are stuff that I I'm literally carrying that we've pulled off the humidor linear footage and put it in our storage humidor space because it doesn't sell in the store and it's not worth the space it takes up but we still sell it online. Well, how about plugging some of them? You have ten locations. Where are they in Florida? Oh, you can go to smoking.com. They're all listed from Vero oh, Beach to right. Margate. You know, our our marquee headquarters are in in our, our marquee headquarters in Boynton Beach, where I'm at, where my office is. And then we have another marquee Davidoff Lounge Bar in West Palm Beach. Right. And uh, over the next two years, three years, we hope to convert our first location in Jupiter, Florida, and um, our third location in Port St. Lucie into these type of cigar bar lounges. Nice. Very good. Very That's good. our hopes. That's our plans. <laughs> All right. They're good plans. <laughs> I'm just going to switch it up a little bit because I know we're holding on to you. Um, talk a little bit about the... Uh, KMA, Kiss My Ass Radio Station. How you doing with that? <laughs> you know, it, it's funny because only our hardest core followers for many years even know that KMA means Kiss My Ass. A lot of our new followers never picked up on it because during the time we were looking to get into, um, we were trying to syndicate on terrestrial radio. I think at one point we were in five different cities. Uh, I think we were in Long Island, um, somewhere here in Florida. I'm, it's, it's leaving my mind. We were in West Palm Beach and then uh, Gainesville. So we're in uh, Long Island, New York, Gainesville, West Palm Beach, Tampa, and Atlanta. So at one point, we're in five markets on terrestrial radio. And um, 
we were having a hard time with program directors with the name Kiss My Ash Radio. And I'll never forget the guy from Atlanta who was really nice, gave us a lot of advice, says, you got to change the name. And I was very reluctant to change the name, didn't want to change the name. And then finally, this is when we were, Atlanta was still our second or third station. You know, I we wanted to get a guest and um, some guy who became an so overnight social media phenomenon. And the guy didn't want to come on our show because of the name, Kiss My Ash. Wow. Yeah, I guess, I guess he just felt like it wasn't proper, it was disrespectful. And I, I didn't. I didn't, you know, begrudge him for it, but um, it just kind of made me say that this name is maybe holding the show back. So that's when we kind of diverted it to KMA Talk Radio and figured any of our hardcore listeners would always know what KMA stood for. Yeah, which sure. Like so um, that just started out as a kind of a joke. You know, I didn't even want to do it. Uh, when the program director from Clear Channel at the time, which is iHeartMedia now, came up to me and suggested it, I just I said, are you crazy? I need to do a show like a whole net. And um, I kind of got talked into it by two of my staff who had worked for Clear Channel. And we took a 13 week contract, figured we will just see how it goes, try to promote the show locally. And the show was a big hit. And then we realized an hour wasn't enough. I mean, Carlito Fuente was my second guest. You know, what I had the benefit of, which helped us out a lot, was there really wasn't anybody doing it at the time. I don't even know if Dave Garofalo had started at that time or not. I'm not sure when he actually started compared to us, but there was really no one doing it other than at that time, Cigar Dave. So because of my being in the industry, I was able to leverage and my connections with my friendships with a lot of these guys to come on and do my show. It's not like today, Carlito and Pete and Steve will do anybody's show. It wasn't like that 10 years ago. Right, right. You couldn't get a hold of these guys. They weren't, you know, what show? We're not doing shows. So I was able to really bank on my friends who came on and all of a sudden I was having guys like Pete Johnson, Carlito Fuente, George Padron. These guys were doing shows with me 10 years ago when there was no video, just audio. So that really helped put us on the map. And I didn't realize how receptive it was going to be. So then we realized, okay, I kind of figured early on that I had to, if I wanted the show to be legitimate, I couldn't use it as a marketing tool for smoke in. So we made sure to separate the two. We never really tried to talk about smoke in. In fact, we told guests when they come on, don't mention smoke in, you know, because I knew that for the show to really be successful, it would take other retailers to be involved. And some of our biggest fans are other retailers of the show today, you know? Um, so we've done a good job of kind of separating it. Now it's just kind of gotten so big that you really don't, there's no way you could know me from KMA and not know smoking anymore. So, but early on, that was very important to me. I didn't want to use it as a marketing tool because I want the show to stand on its own merits. And in many ways, we still do that. And the fact that I'll bring on a manufacturer, I don't carry his product. And it's really funny because when our producers reach out to them, they get all excited thinking, oh, Abe's going to start ordering our brand. No, no, no. We're giving you a chance to expose your brand and talk about your brand to people who may not know your brand. It has nothing to do with smoking and carrying your brand. There you, go. you know, we we, we got to break that in because they, they get confused sometimes. Um, because I try to really run the show on its own entity, and it's just become a monster and it's become its own beast. And we got great fans. You know, I like to call them the KMA crew, and great followers that are mixed up of industry people. I mean, I love the fact that like that Carlito Fuentes like become our biggest fan. Like I see him every week on our show, watching our show. <laughs> Like, great yeah. right but we got other retailers who watch our show and people all over the country one of i got a boomerang hanging on the other side of my wall that was sent to me by one of our australian listeners nice it, yeah nice. it's crazy you know and you get to that point where you start to realize because you sit in a room and you talk in a microphone this is before there were cameras right you don't realize your reach sometimes and who you're reaching and i, I think whether it's you guys or guys like kevin who's experiencing growing pains now and not realizing his reach maybe and stuff like that it, it, it's like an overnight switch where all of a sudden you it dawns upon you oh my god like people are listening to me and, and i'm in baltimore and this guy knows who i am and this is before video he heard my voice and recognized my voice and you'll be kidding me i call my mom she says who's this <laughs> I mean, so yeah, I mean it's it's an it's an enlightening moment when you get to that point and you realize the, the the reach you have. So, which of course is also a responsibility, right? Because I know now a lot of people are listening to me. So, I I I, I 
try to set forth, a, a, you know, a, 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 um, a philosophy that I believe is 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 who I am, and I believe that it's good for our industry. And I, I try to I, I respect that responsibility. That's a wonderful thing. I try good. to catch a show um, as much as I can, and on Saturday mornings. I also have a, uh, a radio show. I do a sports show during the same time that you do for three hours. So ah. it, 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 unfortunately, it, it doesn't uh, drive every Saturday for me. But when I can, I certainly uh, jump on the show and listen. But that's what became nice about, well, I mean, look, our, our shows are always available on iTunes and in podcast form and on YouTube. But, but that's what's great about it is, I mean, I don't catch everybody's show, but I get to watch it three days later. And that's when we gave up on terrestrial radio. I think it was about a year or two ago. I said, you know, this terrestrial radio shit is crap. You know, I got guys in my own state who are not listening to me on my local channel. You know, why, why, why am I trying to chase this dream of being syndicated? It's worthless. So we gave up on the whole terrestrial thing. And we, we then we're going to do this big studio. And then COVID hit. And then, you know, you know, you know it, it's, it's kind of nice to have, because, you know, that, that, that I like to call that ego money. Right. There's no reason why I need a big radio studio. I've been blessed enough where, okay, now that's an ego purchase, right? I'm going to build a nice studio. Not needed, not necessary. I could do it because I can knock on wood, thank God. And then, you know, COVID hits and then, you know, there is no ego money anymore. Now it's like, hey, yeah, we, we're, we're watching every penny. We got to make sure we got, we got a nut to eat later on and, you know, six months from now. We don't know what's going on. Yeah. So that changed all that. But you know, my friend Ronnie, who's all he's been doing is insulting me this whole broadcast. Yeah, Ronnie, ha ha, it's just been it's going. All he's been doing is insulting me this whole broadcast. Yeah, I, I, I never believe in extreme. Yeah, he's he's all over there. Yeah, yeah, Ronnie, that's what Ronnie specializes in. But I love him; he's a dear friend of mine. Um, <laughs> but he he actually talked me into you have to have a studio. He goes, don't it's stick a nice with studio. Home. Well, he, I was gonna do like a hundred thousand, like crazy money studio, but he he talked me into his look. Look, that look that you have at different camera angles. He goes, that's what sets you apart. And I hate I hate to say it, and I'll maybe whisper it, but yeah, he talked some sense into me. So <laughs> when, when we finished our warehouse, um, I'm going to make an upper area where we will do our broadcast live from the, it won't be as extravagant as a studio as I wanted, but it'll have the look and feel and effect of a real studio. Beautiful, nice, well, nice. it looks great. Gabe, uh, I really appreciate all the time you put on there, man. It's been awesome. It's and been fun. It, I got it, to reminisce. I walked down memory lane. And it's <laughs> wonderful. Would you, would, I don't know if you can, if you could stay on a little bit. We're going to go to the segment that everybody kind of waits for. Uh, it's called Stump the Chooch. And Frank basically uh, is going to ask us um, questions and days in history and he tries to make us look like jackasses, which we are. But you know, he he, he, he tries to does it on air. Yeah, yeah. There, there's the sound that we make. <laughs> so uh, if you like to stay on board, he's going to ask three questions for us. So the audience then will have a question to them, and they have to answer on Facebook the correct answer. And we normally give pipes away, but because what you got for us today folks Tonight we're, we are going to do something special. special from from abe himself from the smoking great great drinking cup yeah, really that nice cup will keep your coffee hot for hours and you drink cold for hours it's a great Beautiful. thermal cup that is a nice cup so that is going to be tonight's giveaway and we appreciate uh you and marissa for uh taking care of us today and the in the audience and folks we will have many more uh prizes to give away uh, donated from Abe and uh, his company, Smokin'. And one last thing, as we do for the rest of you guys, to, for those who've been following, this will be the last call yeah. for, uh, for donations for our military uh, men and women. Uh, and our group here is going to be basically in the Middle East with Jerry Feliciano from Briar Nations Nation Group. Uh, this is a pipe and pipe cleaner and, uh, and matches. Our military personnel can't get cigars, can't get pipes and tobacco. Out there in the desert. This so will be our last hurrah before we send them. So anything that cigars, you want to donate. Cigars, tobacco, pipes, pipe cleaner, uh, lighters, anything related to smoking uh, will be donated to our troops. So send us a PM and uh, we'll get you the address to send it to us. This is the last call, folks. We've been doing this for three months for our military personnel. 
So uh, again, we want to thank all of you who have sent. We've got boxes of stuff and tobacco. It, it's been a fantastic drive. We truly appreciate everything. And so those are military people. Uh, I know J uh, Jeremy is going to have a, uh, an eye opening when he sees what we've got. And we're still taking more for this year, for 2020. Yeah. So, so many of our winners have just donated instantly. Yes. Right? Send it to the troops. Yes. Yeah, I just want to say something because if you guys don't mind, I don't want to kick over. Oh, your oh, go right ahead. But but this donating the troops is something that's always been near to dear to us. So I figure this is I, I don't talk about it enough. One of the things is when you do something for 20 years or 15 years or 18 years, however long you've been online, you just think everybody knows you and you don't realize how much new audience you get. Because somebody who's been my customer now for two years, like just said, I didn't know you did this. This is crazy. He just did it recently. So we have a Guards for Gunners program that we've run for years where we have a page on our site that says Guards for Gunners. And it's we change it like quarterly where it's different stuff, but it's stuff that all premium stuff made by manufacturers that we, we buy on deal and that we, we allow you to purchase or add it to your cart, but it's typically at cost or below what normal cost would be because as a company, I never wanted to make profit on people who wanted to donate cigars to, to the stuff. So to the, to the military. And then we used to collect P APO addresses and send it ourselves. And then about a year, a year and a half ago, we, we teamed up with the awesome guys over at Cigars for Warriors. So if anybody ever at any time wants to donate something, whether you're buying something from us or not, you can go to smokein.com, go to our Gars for Gunners page. There's a link at the bottom. There's like 16 or 20 odd items that's all for sale, literally below what would be normally cost or just around awesome. what it costs us. And we order it and we store it. And once a quarter, we, we, we send uh, the cigars for warriors, any cigars that would donate it to our store from us or people have bought. So it's just another way. And most people who maybe newly met us don't even know we had this program. So uh, thanks Very for cool. sharing Very that. Good. Yeah. Appreciate okay. it. So that's the way we feel. Yeah. But anyway, so we're going to go on right now to Cousin Frank's segment, Stump the Chooch. <laughs> Frank, <laughs> thank you for the first three questions. Uh, uh, so, uh, here I am. There's the Chooch. <laughs> don't be a Chooch. Well, basically, you don't want to be one. Uh, but usually, now, Abe, please feel free to play along. Uh, I'll ask a question. It'll be related to some kind of his history. Sometime during this month, this week, you know, it's never exactly this day. Could be, because I don't want to give it away. But here's the first question. On this day, October 24th, 1954, this, Today's the 27th, but anyway. 27th. <laughs> I said on this day in 1954. Uh, Ron, clean out your ears for a second. Yeah. You know, I think you might have too much wax buildup. I, I took it out before the show. <laughs> uh, October 27th, 1954. Uh, this very famous couple got divorced because of a filming of a famous skirt scene. Who was the couple? Joe Mar DiMaggio, Marilyn Monroe. Monroe. There we go, there we go. So I didn't stump you guys. It looks like, see, Ronnie knew that because he's from New York, he follows the Yankees. <laughs> and But the real story of that is, why did they get divorced? Because of Jay, okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, uh, allegedly, no. allegedly. <laughs> Because, because of that scene on the subway grid when her skirt went up? <laughs> well, yeah, and actually, they got the divorce because DiMaggio allegedly allegedly struck Marilyn. And yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Huh. They know about that. Wait, 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 wait. I lost it. DiMaggio did what? Bada bee, bada boom. They struck Marilyn because of oh. that. Scene. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that was a huh. disrespectful. Yeah. She That's probably didn't yeah. set the Mr. Coffee machine at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> she showed the morning, uh, she showed the morning brew. <laughs> All right. We All got right. that one. A little tidbit, you know, I know you like guys like that. On on October 27th, again, this day in history, I'm gonna give you this one. This actually made travel easier 
from the Lower East Side to Harlem, and it cost five cents. The A train. The A train. The, well, more in general, but it's 1904. Trolley. No, uh, the New York subway was opened officially on this date in 1904. Oh, right. Cost a that. nickel. Cost a nickel. That was a lot of money back then. The A train still goes in that direction. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> One more for us and then the audience. You got it. Okay. Keeping with the Halloween theme. On uh, this day, 1938. Jesus. Right. Listen, you have to your time. I know, hey, we're old. I mean, this is like, I mean, he's going back, like, back to the future. I need a DeLorean to answer these questions. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to tie into the. I'm gonna hey, I'm right there the with you, Abe. All right. 1938. 1938. This radio show aired on Halloween and caused some major. Oh, uh, uh, World of the World. There we go. There we go. You see? Yeah. yeah. And oh, where they land? In Jersey. <laughs> In the people, swamps of Jersey. <laughs> people actually jumped out of windows. Oh, oh yeah. they killed themselves. Yeah. 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 Yep. They yep. freaked out, man. <laughs> it's going to happen today, too. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm done. I quit. <laughs> hey, go, oh, out, right. go so out on a high this note. This is for the audience. Yeah. This for the audience only. They this, get the cup. They get the cup here from Smoking. Uh, Honest Abe and his crew sent this up. Folks, this is a fantastic looking uh, cup indeed. And really as I nice. save says, it's going to, oh, yeah, you got one yourself. There you, oh, go. Yeah. there you go. All right, audience. Facebook, Kyle, get ready. Check out Facebook. This is for you. All right, here you go. What two families are joining forces on a special project to honor the former patriarchs of each company? What two cigar families are joining forces on a special project that will be, the cigars will be released actually during the PS PCA in 2021. What two families? Ooh, lay up. All right, folks, go ahead. This is for you. The truth is in the audience. Let's go. I've got okay, a got Padron and Fuente. By Brian Lewis. Padron and Fuente. That is absolutely correct. Wow. But here's, here's a good twist on this. Do you know that each uh, both well, each son is actually going to be honoring the other family with really? their landing? Yes. Wow. So it's going to be quite a historic thing for, for these two families who have been, hey, let's face it, they've been competitors, but what a way to honor Hatfields. each other. <laughs> that is pretty right. amazing. That All right, so Brian, historical. Brian, Brian Lewis, message us your uh, information. Brian Lewis, Brian Lewis wins the cup. Yeah. And Brian, here it is. Brian, PM us your address, and we will get the cup to you. Donate it from Smokin and Honest Abe and his crew. Abe, we can't thank you enough for uh, the donation. We can't thank you enough for your time. And we truly, truly enjoyed your stories. Thanks for opening up. And uh, we hope maybe we can get you in the future to talk yeah, more. Yeah, we'll get you back. Anytime, uh, anytime you guys want. Brian anytime Lewis is want. saying he right, has the cup. Tomorrow Hold afternoon. On. Hold, on. <laughs> Hold on. Brian All is right. saying he has say, the cup say, to give it to the again, next guy. Now. Brian Lewis says he has that cup. Give it to the next guy or give another question. Oh, okay. So the next guy was Jeff hey. Carpenter. No, no, I'm sorry, not Jeff. Uh, yeah, I yes. have Jeff Carpenter. Jeff Carpenter was the next winner. Yeah. Brian, you're awesome. We Brian, thank you for that. Honest Abe's brother. There you go. He's <laughs> honest. He has, the, he has the mug. What there a great go. gesture. Nice job, Brian. Very nice. Very thank nice. You. Thank you, Brian. And Jeff Carpenter, you are now the winner of the cup. And uh, PM us the information, and we'll get that up. Uh, Thank you. Yes, thank you, Brian, uh, from uh, Jeff. Isn't that great? Don't yeah. you love when communities like that? I love that. Really yeah. nice. We, really nice. we have a fantastic community in itself. I, I got to tell you, I, I'm going to give him props right now, right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this is the definitely right, Brian Lewis. So, Brian Lewis has, was the inspiration for this next awesome, crazy, 
idea I got already in the works. In fact, I shared the art with him privately. He inspired me because we have a we have a make your own sampler program on our on our website, which is pretty cool. Another thing that a lot of people who probably newly started following us don't know, but you can go to our site and you can make your own 5, 10, 15, 20 packs. So instead of make, buying a sampler that some you know retailer or company made for you, made up of whatever they could buy cheaply, you can make them wherever you want. And you, you can name them, you could save them to your library. So you made a, a five pack or a 10 pack that you love. You don't have to go make it again. It's just saved in your library. And he inspired me to do something and we are finishing up. We already got the art done. We're finishing up the coding. So when we release that news and video next month, wow. people should know that that Brian Lewis was the inspiration for that idea. Very cool. That How is awesome. That? Now, will I have like a standard price, no matter what the cigars are going to be? When you go to our site and you go there, you can pick cigars by individual. It'll show you a picture of the product if you're not sure what it looks like. And then it'll tell you the price as you add it to the cart, the retail price to the stick. There's a little cart next to it. And then if you pick a five pack, you know, it's whatever the five sticks cost. That's the package price. If you make a 10 pack, you save 5%. If you make a 15 pack, you save 10%. And if you make a 20 pack, you save 15%. I think that's how it works. Wow, wow. wow. very, nice. But, very but, nice. but the cool feature of what I like is that if you make different samplers according to what you like, you could save them in your library. So. You don't have to come back and find the 15 individual cigars or the, you know, whatever that you made to make your sampler. You can name them and save them in your library. And even if you forget what they were, you can hit a button. It'll show you what your 10 or 15 or five uh -huh. pack is. Very so good. it's really a great feature. And I think we haven't really highlighted it enough, but this idea that Brian gave me, not, not unintentionally, he was just doing what he does. And I'm like, I, this is brilliant. We need to do this. So I've shared it with him. I kind of show him the art, you know, because he. So wait a minute now. Now is Brian a friend of yours? I mean, the customer. Oh, oh, because oh, 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 we I don't mean, he, uh, listen, you know any. Uh... He's a friend of mine now. I mean, yeah, he's a friend of mine now. <laughs> I mean, that's how we make friends. But he, he was a customer, and he loved what we do, and he was posting about it, and I was just seeing his post, and I literally messaged him, and I said, "Look, I'm just want to tell you, man, you gave me this great idea, and whatever, and." uh you know, I, it's, it's what a very exciting thing for me. I can't wait to put it out next month. All That's the coding cool. will be very done good. next week or two, and in November we'll launch it. That's awesome. All right. Very yeah, nice. Brian says the uh, Try Some Fire sample is my five That's pack. That's his five pack. It's, it's called Try Some Fire, and he picked his five cigars, and he named it, and, and, and he loves it. And uh, what we're going to do is going to take that program and make it very, very interactive for people. So it should be a lot of fun. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, nice. If we get it to work. All right. Nice. Abe, anything else you want to plug before we pull uh, the plug pull here? The plug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it was a great night. I really appreciate you guys having me. I mean, it's it's, it's fun, you know? I mean, uh, just even reminiscing about stories that I, I've forgotten about is, is always a cool thing. And and uh, this is a great lifestyle. And anything that I think that shares this lifestyle helps get people interested in it. Um, is, is always what's best for our community. So I appreciate the work you guys do because God knows we don't make money doing this. No, you know, no. no, one's, making, no one's making money doing this. No. If you're doing I this, love. you got to love what you're doing. Be giving up. doesn't come in. <laughs> Me and my team have been giving up every Saturday morning for now for over 10 years. And, yep. you know, knock on wood, I could pay them a few bucks now for it. In the beginning, it was just voluntary. Yep. But, you know, I mean, no one's making money to this. So if you're doing this, you really love this industry. You love what the, what it's about. So I commend you guys and anybody else out there who's doing stuff like this. We love it. Well, well thank you. Keep up the good work too. Yeah. And say hello to Rudy for us when you're <laughs> <laughs> I, will. I, I don't think I don't think we're gonna see Rudy until after November third. You know, oh, so, yeah. Yeah, he's a little bit busy these days. <laughs> I know. Tell him I found the laptop uh, that's got some. Uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, uh, uh, Abe, thanks again. We, Thank we you, really buddy. would love to have you back. We're going to look forward to the, the uh, tickets. Especially the event, yeah. Well, if it's you can reach out, or Mariska can reach out to make sure when you have it so we can When we get it. the details going, we're going to reach out to a whole bunch of media people. This is going oh. to be, honestly, I'm, I'm really shooting for it to be a stratospherically historic event. We want the help of everybody spreading this word, and we want to get everybody involved. So you guys, without a doubt, will be contacted. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, buddy. You.
appreciate it. Have a great rest of the night. Go to bed. We know you're an hour ahead of us. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they're, they're keeping me up late, too. Yeah. Eh? Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, from all of us to all of you, thank you and keep them smoking. We'll see you next week. Take care, folks. Good night, Good night everyone. Everybody. Good, Good night. night. Good night.